Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Hi, long time no see. You're welcome to The Advocate on PLUS TV Africa, where five of us discuss five thought-provoking topics in an atmosphere of seriousness, decisiveness, and a little bit of laughter. However, we do not mince words, and like we say, no holds bad. Today, I'll be speaking about the status quo of the Nigerian leadership and the con constant fight for hope as a Nigerian. Balao is warning traders who blocked food supply, warning their Warning them that Egungu to be careful. Liberos is advocating deeply on the importance of good governance, while Chuka is asking all Nigerians to condemn both old and new governments. So we have a new, so that we can have a new Nigeria. And finally, Jumoke, well, first let me say, good to meet you, finally, <laughs> and happy birthday. Thank you. So Jumoke is posing a question as she asks, who is Nigeria's next Messiah? So please stay with us, and we'll be right back. Leadership, hope, and the status quo. Well, first let me say that it's great to be back on The Advocate after a long hiatus. Um, now that I'm back, living in Nigeria today takes a special brew of courage, resourcefulness, a little bit of apathy, but plenty spoonfuls of craziness. Indeed, I'm tired assailed, fatigued by the daily dose of misery and death. I mean, it's, it's a bit like living in a real Mad Max movie set. Yet people like Liberus, he gives me courage, he gives me hope. He keeps talking, challenging the status quo, fighting in the hope that somehow, someday, Nigeria can become great again. It is possible that we may yet pull this nation out of the dark from the abyss. I hope so, for the sake of our children. However, Nigeria is presently constituted and governed stuff. That requires something that even the current political class seem to be greatly deficient in. Which brings me to the main issue that I want to table today. The remarkable absence of hope, the narrative of hope that's missing in all the discourse on the vision for a better Nigeria. It is the business and the trademark, indeed, I, I will say, of politicians all over the world to sell to their people a picture of hope and a vision of a better future. I might even add that it is the responsibility of leaders to sell hope. However, when listening to the current crop of political leaders lately, all I hear is the raucous noises of cows, death, doom, and despair. And then I've said this before on this platform that I think it bears repeating that any country that fails to present a vision of a better country and instead fashions weapons of war against its young persons clearly has no future. Elected leaders must do their jobs, not only to provide security and welfare, but also to present clear visions of hope and inclusive progress for all citizens and residents. If you listen to the leaders of Dubai, Sheikh Al Maktoum, James talk, you hear about his grand plans for, for his country and the people in terms of the direction where they're going. If you if you're hacking back, you know, 50 years in here, President J the late Kennedy talked about America in the 60s, he painted a vision of, of great American progress, of exceptionalism in science and manufacturing. You don't see good leaders blaming ghosts from the past. In Nigeria, we're consumed instead by talks of cows and herders, which are indeed relics of a past which we, you know, stubbornly hold on to. Same way our politicians, who are used to funding adulation of supporters and are not used to any sort of criticisms. So any, any attempt to criticize them, they'll consider it disrespect. And in fact, they'll say they label you a hater. And some may even go as far as uh, labeling your, your criticism as hate speech. 
That's the world we live in now. So what vision of Nigeria do we hope to present to this new generation of young people who are not accustomed to the old ways, the old ways of the oversensitive generation, people who have been nurtured by the internet, yet assaulted by the failures of their own state, people who are accustomed to the ways of decent societies, yet they're living in uh, the stark reality of sc pervasive scarcity and the abundance of opportunities that the world presents. So you can imagine how frustrated some of these young people can be, willing to work hard, yet the opportunities are far in between. Some, indeed, they're told to keep quiet, and be more respectful, and wait for your turn. Wait for your turn in the raging sea of despair. And sadly, if we go back to the NSAS protests, which took place last October, when millions of young people filled the streets to peacefully protest, calling for an end to police brutality, what they got in return were not words of, of vision of a more just society. Instead, they got even more brutality. And indeed, more threats and actions continue. That tells young persons in no uncertain terms that a vision of a country, a better country they yearn for, is lost. And instead, they should settle for a status quo of injustice and suffering. On October 20th, 2020, that day broke my heart. It broke me in many pieces. It took something from me, something that I doubt I can ever find again. I lost hope. Ah, uh, if people like you would say that they lost hope, I wonder what... Um, you know, the everyday, everyday Nigerian would, um, would, would say. Uh, because really, um, I agree with you everything you have said, and there's really nothing to look forward to in terms of hope. But we just can't lose hope. We have to keep hoping. Oh, wow. And for me, in most cases, I think we are the ones that will have to sometime rise and say, you know what, we need to take it back and make it better. Because, like you said, if we keep waiting for them to make it better, it's, it's, it's we'll lose happen. hope, Taya. But we try to paint a picture of how it ought to be. And I try very hard not to compare Nigeria with any other country, be it Western or African country, because we're a continent of our own with over 400 ethnicities. But what is a democracy? Is a government of all of us for all of us. So when we try to paint that picture, like you mentioned in your advocacy, they call you a hater. Because some few people are paid to not see everything that is going wrong. So you're the one person who is pointing it out. To say, you cannot compare human life to the life of a cow. They say you're a hater. <laughs> I'm flabbergasted. Um, October 20 um, was a very sad day in the annals of Nigeria's history. But, but for me... Um, Along with every other thing that we need to do about the incident of that day, one other thing we must not fail to do is to get more participatory in the process. I have asked myself, the protest, the, the, the police that was at the center of that uh, uh, protest, has it been reformed? Okay. Has anything changed? Not yet, sir. Absolutely nothing has changed. The police remains brutal. They continue to do the same thing they were doing before that time. Chuka. So can we just get more participatory in the process, including this generation? Can we hijack even the, 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 the parties, if it is possible? Chuka. You know. but, but really, I'm maniacally, uh, I'm maniacally bewildered. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, that uh, anybody would think that government would do it differently you know, during that protest. So, Chuka. Yeah, I mean, the government, as we know it, um, is hell-bent on blocking any attempt to modernize the country. So I think that, you know, the only the way we could, I don't know, the way we could make, bring back hope for someone like Emeka um, involves quite a lot. I mean, it's something that's close to. And somebody what like I, you too, you know, because uh, you talk about <laughs> run away. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear? Huh? I said we need to bring hope back to people like you too, because you run away. <laughs> oh no no no! I am very. I am in Nigeria in spirit, and I shall be back shortly. <laughs> Carry on. 
But the Becca is here in Fisica, but uh, he has moved to Europe in the <laughs> spirit. spirit. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, it is the failure of Nigeria that is the reason I am here for True. a few months Obviously. of this year. If it wasn't for the failure of the country after 60 years of independence, I shouldn't be here at all. There's nothing much for me to have been here if everything was working fine. So I think it all sort of ties in with what Emeka is saying. Where is the hope? What's going to change? How is it going to change? You know? Well, um, you know, just to round off, I, I, I believe that, as I said in that piece, that um, political leaders, in as much as we're grappling with all the challenges, cows, herders, and all the difficulties, I think they should also make an attempt to project a measure of hope, hope. Yeah, especially absolutely. to young people. Very, very. In your speeches, in the, in the things you do, yeah. in your actions, give hope to the people. And so, I've said my piece. Um, but after this break, uh, Golan is bringing out his egungun as he speaks on the food blockage from the north to the south. So please stay with us.